Hello, this is Chris Jewett from Extreme Flight RC. Welcome to Build Video 4. Today we're going to finish up the electronics install and do a final setup on the airplane to get it ready to fly. Let's get started. We're going to begin by installing the stabs. My stab tube is pretty tight so I'm twisting it to pull it through the fuselage. After you get the stab seated, make sure that the stab tube is pushed all the way in to the stab half. I'm using 36 inch servo extensions on the stabs. I like to run them through the holes in the formers in the fuselage to keep them from flopping around. It can be really annoying when you're doing a rolling harrier down the runway and you hear those extensions clanking around inside the fuselage. I've decided to mount my receiver just in front of the rudder servo so I'm running all the leads to that point. After you've got the stabs plugged into the receiver you want to make sure that they're mixed properly and moving in the same direction at the same rate and at the same time. After you've done that you'll also want to set up your throws using a pitch meter of some kind. You know you can get about 80 degrees of pitch out of these elevators. I'm setting them for 65 on my high rate and then I'll have a really high rate for tumbling. While you're finishing up the electronics in the fuselage, it's important to make sure everything is velcroed or zip tied down and that nothing can flop around and get loose or wear itself out with vibration over time. I like to use these little foam wire keepers in the fuselage to keep everything organized. They're a little high density foam that come with a peel off backing and stick right down. I got them from Spot On RC. If you're using a JR or Spectrum system, I like to put my satellites, one behind the receiver in the turtle deck and a second one in front of the receiver on the fuel tank. After you've got your basic radio setup done, it's time to balance the airplane and figure out where to put your batteries. I have some wire tied around the wing tube, and the wing tube is a good place to start with a 3D airplane on your balance. I'll show you how to tweak the CG later. I've got three 2S 3300 batteries here that I'm going to use on this airplane. I can tell that if I put three batteries forward of the fuel tank that it's going to be nose heavy. And if I put three on the wing tube or after the wing tube that it's going to be tail heavy. So I'm going to have to come up with some sort of system that will allow me to move the batteries around in front of and behind the fuel tank so I can tweak the CG after I've got it flying. So my solution was to make a couple of battery trays. This one goes over the wing tube and we're gluing it on with a thick glue because the wing tube sleeve The second tray will go in front of the fuel tank and will glue right down to the plywood floor of the cockpit. It will allow us to wrap Velcro up underneath it and secure the battery. This is what it looks like all completed, ready to go. Here I'm just preparing the wing tips to accept the side force generator bolts. I like to put rubber washers on my thumb screws. It keeps them from vibrating out and it also keeps them from marking up the wood when you screw them down. You need to come up with some way to figure out which servo extensions go to which port inside the airplane. I've used two different color servo extensions to accomplish that and I've also labeled them. Even though I've bench tested all this stuff before we put it together, I want to make sure that we don't uh, mess up our aileron servos or break our aileron or control horn. I'm plugging in one servo at a time to make sure that it works as I expect it to before I plug both of them in together. This may be different if you end up using match boxes or some other sort of mixing system. want to make sure your fail safe is set to throttle off. You can see here that when I turn off the transmitter, the throttle goes to idle. 
Next I'm going to build and install the pilot head. I'm using a very sharp pair of scissors to cut out the visor. The visor comes separate from the pilot head. You need to cut out the visor shape and it is secured with two screws. Everybody's got their own way of doing cockpits and pilots. The kit comes with a Depron floor that fits inside the canopy that you can mount the pilot to and the dashboard that also comes in the kit too. I like to keep things simple so I'm going to mount the pilot head directly to the airplane. I'm using some sticky velcro here that I'm going to stick the pilot to and then I'm going to use straps around the former in the airplane to hold the pilot in place. Just a note, before you go drilling holes in the side of the cowling to get to the needle valves, if you're running stock mufflers like I am, the muffler gets in the way of you being able to actually reach the needle valve from the side. So we finally got this airplane out to the field. The first thing I want to do before I assemble it is fill up the fuel tank. What I'm really doing here is to check and make sure I didn't mount it upside down, I didn't mix the fuel line versus the vent line, and that there's no leaks. I want to make sure that the fuel tank works properly, and completely fills up. This airplane has a dual screw mounting method. It's got a four millimeter hardened bolt here that goes through the mounting tab that comes into the fuselage in front of the wing tube. And behind the wing tube, it's got a nylon thumb screw.
when you have a large airplane, you have to be careful of where you pick it up from. There's some structures on the aircraft that are hard enough to be able to pick it up. Anything attached to the motor is pretty solid. Anything attached to the landing gear is pretty solid. There's a lot of plywood around the landing gear block on the bottom that allows you to pick it up. If you get your hand on one of the stringers as you pick it up, it is possible to break them. Just a note of caution, if you keep the thumb screws in the wing tips when you transport the wings, it is possible that you could knock the blind nuts out on the inside of the wing tips. After you get it to the field for the first time and you've got it put together, it's the last chance to make sure that all your mixes are set properly, you've got your expos set where you want them, your rates set where you want them, before you made in the airplane. A good range check is absolutely essential before any maiden flight. Here I'm doing a 360 degree range check to make sure that there's no blind spots in my radio setup. This is a brand new motor that's never run. So what I've done is I've set the carburetor needles to the specifications in the manual. And what I'm doing here is with the ignition off, turning the prop with the choke closed to get fuel up to the carburetor. Once fuel reaches the carburetor, you'll be able to smell it and actually feel it on the bottom of the carburetor butterfly. With the choke on, flip it until it pops and then take the choke off and flip it until it starts, per the manual. After you've got it running, do another 360 degree range check to make sure that the electronics in the ignition and vibration aren't doing anything strange to your radio system. And lastly, make sure that the motor is running properly at low, middle, and high end. This DA120 ran perfectly at the recommended settings from the manual. And after you're happy with the way the motor runs, go ahead and fill it up again and take it off and break in the motor in the air. We're going to talk about several methods to check CG in the air with an airplane. This airplane is trimmed to fly straight and level hands off at about a quarter throttle. What I'm going to do is keep the throttle setting the same and turn the airplane upside down. Once I get it leveled off, I'm going to take my hands off the stick again, and from there we'll be able to tell whether it's nose heavy or tail heavy immediately. In this case, when I take my hands off the stick, it pulls to the canopy or towards the ground. That's a nose heavy condition. If it pulled to the sky, it would be tail heavy. A second way to check CG is to bring the throttle to idle and let the plane slow down. If the plane noses over to maintain airspeed like this one is doing, then it's definitely nose heavy. If it maintains altitude and slows down, then it's probably pretty close to good. If it climbs, it's definitely tail heavy. A third way would be to come across the field trimmed for a moderate airspeed, pull to a 45 degree angle, roll inverted, and take your hands off the stick. If it pulls back to the ground like it's doing here, it's nose heavy. If it stays on the 45, it's perfect. If it climbs, it's tail heavy. A final way will be a dive test. We're going to climb to altitude, chop the throttle to idle, and point the nose straight at the ground. If it pulls to the canopy, it's nose heavy. To the gear, it's tail heavy. Straight as an arrow is good. So to summarize, this baby's nose heavy. So what I need to do is move that battery that's in front of the fuel tank, either back to where the other two batteries are, or even further back, maybe behind the wing tube just completed the first flight and I'm doing a post-flight inspection. I want to make sure that the motor's tight, the motor bolts are tight, that the mufflers are tight, the gear are tight, nothing is vibrated loose. I'm going to check every hinge to make sure none of the hinges have pulled out. 
I'm going to check my servo arms, my push rods, my connections, everything that you can think of you should probably go through after the first couple flights to make sure that there's no problems with the airplane. B&E Graphics did an awesome job on the graphics package for this airplane. Tune in to the next build video to see the graphics install.